Hey everybody, thanks for checking another video. So, it's been another year, and what's that mean? It's uh, time for another yearly video about my side project. Uh, this is this is number three. This is the third year. So I've been working on it for like uh, over a thousand days, I guess now. Uh, and for this year, in 2023, I've, I've made over a thousand commits to the project. So like different changes. Some of them are just like package upgrades here and there, but I'd say like easily more than half of them are, are legitimate. This is a change to take a little step further. And that's what I've always kind of said about my side project. And right now it's at 3,600 commits. So it's been a lot of commits in general over the last three years. Uh, and I always like to say it's like one brick at a time. I kind of think of it as like one commit at a time where every commit is like a little change to just make it a little bit better. And it, it kind of always goes into what I talk about with my side project, which is, which is what this is, passion project as well is just kind of the, the polishing and the whittling it away and kind of thinking myself as like a woodworker in the garage, just trying to make every little bit perfect and whatever needs to change. And uh, so three years is what we're at now, but who's to say how long it'll go. And as I've said in my other videos, I hope it goes for a very long time. And let's just, let's just get right into checking out some of the other pieces about it here. Uh, first off about the videos. Uh, so I, I'll show here, this is my first video, one year of live coding my OS in the browser where I kind of, that was when I was doing more live streams. So this is quite a long video, like two hours, that one, where I go over like all the progress because that's kind of the first review. Then last year I had my, uh, the ultimate React project, two years of building an OS in the browser. That was for two years and I'd made a lot of progress there. That's the same year last year, or it was basically last year, but I guess it was the start of this year where my website got nominated for a Webby Award actually for best personal website, which I was pretty proud about. Uh, and that's kind of where my mind is this year as well. So a lot of the things that I've changed throughout the year has been in preparation for the next year and for trying again uh, and just making it better in any way I can, and which is like motivation. It's a good goal and it's it's given me tons of opportunities to learn along the way. Uh, this is the project here. I keep it a, an open source version of it. Uh, it's called Datal OS. Uh, you can see it on GitHub uh, and it's getting pretty popular now. It's got 7,000 uh, some stars now, which I'm pretty proud about, 7,026. So that's pretty cool. It keeps moving. Uh, as you see here, it says 3,600 commits, like I said. So I, I've done tons and tons of changes and I've got a huge uh, readme of, of features here. And I can kind of do a quick dive on a lot of this. I've also got some test files here. I've also this time, instead of sharing just the browser, I'm sharing a little screen capture here so that I can show how the browser can interact with the desktop, the, the real desktop environment as well. And this is also supported on Mac and, and even in mobile. And we can even do a little peek and see some of what mobile does as well. Uh, and you can see here from my commit history for this year that basically every single week, all 52 weeks this year, I've been able to do something uh, or contribute in some way, some weeks more than others. Uh, but it, pretty much every night I'm always thinking of something about it. And it's, it's one of those things where it's just always been on my head for four years as uh, as is evidenced by the commits and just by all these videos that I make. Um, so let's get into it. So the website itself is, is the same as my name, dustinbrett.com. Uh, you can check it out for yourself. It's running what I'm calling Datal OS, which is essentially the built version of the source code that's here. Uh, and I'm hosting it through a Cloudflare CDN content delivery network which is a free service for like small hobbyist websites like mine. And it actually makes things a lot faster. Essentially, it takes my files off of the web server that I pay like a hundred bucks a year for, where I just put my sites, my files on an FTP site. Uh, Cause there's no backend, it's just static web server. So I put them on FTP and then they go, the CDN kind of gets them and the website routes through the CDN. So wherever you are in the world, if those, if the content delivery network has a server there, they can serve it to you faster by serving it to you there, which is something I couldn't do with just my own server. So I recommend a CDN for anybody hosting any website, really it just, it's a huge improvement. Um, so yeah, let's get into let's first. Yeah, first thing we'll do here is we'll talk about the drag and drop because I got the folder right here. So what we'll do is we'll take every file here and we're just going to take them from the Windows 10 desktop and we're going to drag them onto my website and drop them. And as you can see right there, it uh, right away the demo begins and it copies the files here. Um, it also copies to where where I drop it. There's so many little touches that I've done over the years as well that it's uh, it's kind of hard to get into them all, but. So many things to make it as seamless as possible. And every time I see or see someone do something with it or I do something with it where it doesn't quite feel right, I, I make a note and I've made notes with my post-its there. And the last year's videos, I had many post-its on the wall. This year, it looks like less, but I feel like I've probably done more. I've just kind of written less post-its, I feel like. Um, so that's my, been my way of keeping track of my progress and 
and making sure that I'm making improvements that make sense and just like not going crazy by trying to keep it all in my head basically. Um, so as you see, when I drop it, it, it makes icons for everything. It dynamically reads all the icons depending on what the files are. Uh, this desktop grid is completely dynamic and that you can drag to it. Uh, these get saved locally in your browser on the client side. So if I were to refresh the page or come back, you see the files are still there. They don't go anywhere, basically. And I've essentially got some version of support for all these files and, and many, many more formats. Some of them I have already embedded in my website in the file structure. So if you were to open my PC, you could look through the folder structure here. Uh, or there's many other ways we can look through it that I'll, I'll go into as well. Um, to, to find whatever it is you might be looking for if you're just kind of playing around. The basic idea of it originally with being my website was it was supposed to make an experience of someone as if they kind of connected to my computer. And it's like all my personal files are in there and there's all these things you can do that are like how I remember computers back in the day. Things like having Doom on the desktop and playing Doom. That's one of the things my website can do. It has a DOS emulator. It has many emulators. Um, this is one of them for doing DOS games. Doom is one of the games I have, but if you right click on the, on the file, which is a shortcut, you can say open file location and see where the files are, which are actually a folder called DOS bundles. Uh, if you make this folder bigger, you can see that it's uh, where it's off of from users, public documents, games, DOS bundles. It, it's a bit deep in there, but all of these are kind of some of my favorite shareware DOS games. So there's actually quite, quite a few hidden things within my site. So you go, oh, cool, it has Doom. It's like, well, it actually has 13 different games. And not only that, but you could just drag in any game and just play anything, basically, any DOS game, at least in this example. So I have other things on there like Commander Keen, which I actually also have in the start menu under games. I also have Commander Keen in there, uh, which is another DOS one. But some of the ones that aren't in there, aren't obvious, are like the old Duke Nukem's I have, Duke Nukem 1, Duke Nukem 2, and Duke Nukem 3, actually. They all had star, uh, shareware games, and they were all really good games, honestly. So there's tons of stuff on there. Wolfenstein, Blakestone. Uh, you, you have to take a look for it yourself. And like I said, there's a search here, so you can also search for it, although you, you probably wouldn't know to search for it, so this is kind of something you'd have to hunt for. As far as things you might want to search for on my website... Um, I mean, first off, you can search for picture, personal pictures of myself if you wanted, or just whatever whatever you would go to a blog for to see, oh, pictures of that person in their blog post, whatever uh, videos, that kind of thing. And I have all of that on there. It's also a dynamic search. Uh, let's see how it works in the demo here. So I just dragged on a bunch of files. Let's see if they show up in the search. I'm not 100% sure they will, but they should. So let's see. We open the search here. This is an another feature I've added this year, just in the last few months, actually, is the search menu on the taskbar. I'm pretty proud of it because it actually turned out really well and it's made the site a ton more accessible and I've made a lot of search improvements since then uh, along with other performance improvements. So let's see here. If we search for this ACDC, let's try it. AC, oh wow, it crashed. Okay, well good. So then that's a test of a, an interesting one. Is it just doing that in general? Okay, cool. So I've somehow broke search, I guess. Uh, also, the I had recently updated the page for the demo, so it's possible that the caching was just messed up. No, something's broke there. Okay, well that's fine. Um, okay, yeah, so when it's not doing dynamic search, it worked when I deleted the files. So it's funny that I mentioned that one, and this is a this is the beauty of demo that I've actually has helped me improve the site a lot, is that if I try to do every single thing, I, I usually find a few things that don't work, but only if I'm showing other people, basically. Um, so anyway, we can still demo search. Search works fine. We'll demo it in a tiny bit, but as far as having the dynamic search, there seems to be something going on there, and it's typically an easy fix, and I'm really quick with fixing stuff in that I, I don't like having the bugs in there, so I, like, I'm going to write it down, and today it'll be fixed, that kind of thing. It, also, it's pretty easy because I've had it working before. Uh, so just imagine that part worked where you could search dynamically, but whenever we wanted to demo search, I'm going to get rid of the files for now just because there seems to be some kind of dynamic issue. Um, moving on to some of the examples, let's say this ACDC example, one of the things, if you see the icon it created, see it's an MP3 file, but it actually did have, does have an icon. That's because I have, uh, another thing in there that actually reads the metadata off of MP3 files, uh, these ID, ID3 information. So it's able to get cover art information uh, and you could hover over it and see other information, the size of it, the, the date it was modified, which is essentially when it was put on the desktop. Uh, and if you were to double click it, it's going to open up in the MP3 player and play. And we won't play at, at any of that just because there's probably some copyright. And I, hopefully not that nanosecond of song is copyrighted, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, anyways, it opens up the WebAmp player, it's called, which essentially looks like WinAmp. And it's someone who's done a very good job of making a WinAmp emulator. I didn't make that, uh, but it's completely fully functional. And I've integrated as much as I can. Uh, so, for example, here, Milk Drop, which is like, a, it, it's powered by this thing called Butter Churn, uh, which is essentially music visualization. 
You see here it opens here and you can make it bigger. One of the features I've added is the ability to have it on the desktop. Uh, and something that I think might be new to this demo is, is if you right click on the desktop now and go to background, I, I noticed, I, I now log that it's in the music visualizer and you can uncheck it and have it go back to like the minimized form. Before you just had to close the, the, the player basically. Uh, so that's another cool feature. Another thing, if we go into music here, I've got a few playlists. These Soma FM pl uh, playlists are streaming music. And I think one of the newer ones is having the newer Groove Salad. Before that, I was just used to play Groove Salad Classic. But now I have the newer one. Uh, and, you and you can just play that, and that's playing streaming music, basically. And you can also skin it. Another feature that was recently added from the same person who made this, they have a, a skin library, and they've given me access to be able to make requests. So I can do this random option where it will randomly pick a Winamp skin. And you get a cool one like that, like let's say Pac-Man. Uh, and another feature I showed before is that that remembers that. So if you close and you come back the next day and you open this, it'll go back to Pac-Man. And again, let's not play that sound much more. Um, so yeah, that's that example for music. Another cool one like this uh, this picture here is actually a JXL file, which is JPEG XL, which has been removed from Chrome. But we're in Chrome and we are able to see this JXL file because I've added JXL decoding to the website. Uh, it's the same story with TIFF files here. This TIFF file is able is uh, is also being decoded that's not something that normally works with uh, the browser at least chrome browser uh some of the features you can do with these images too here's a background a jpeg file and you can right click it and you can also set it as the background so that's uh something you can do with any of the pictures basically and it's actually something you can do with videos as well so if you see here i have a video player uh that can play videos another thing too is its thumbnail is also dynamic so you see its thumbnail is is moving as well and i can right click that and i can actually make the video uh, the wallpaper as well and that also is retained so if you anytime you come back that could be the wallpaper if you want um some of the other icons here i have this little that's just a gif uh you can open it in the photo player or photo viewer sorry but also uh, it just plays as a GIF on the desktop, which is actually something Windows doesn't do. As you can see here, the GIF is also here, and it does not animate GIFs in Windows for whatever reason. Uh, some of the other wallpapers we have, just to change wallpapers right now, I have APOD, which is Astronomy Photo of the Day. That will grab the latest one from the uh, NASA API, which is a free API to access. Coastal Landscape is a cool uh, wallpaper somebody made that kind of reminds me of Windows XP, and I've, I loved it so much I loaded it on here. This Hexelis one's pretty cool. Uh, it takes a second to load. I'm thinking of adding a little loading indicator because sometimes it looks a bit slow. But when it loads, it's really cool and it uses like some kind of generative AI type of model. It's kind of a little bit before that, but it's it's got some very cool effects that are in some ways, they look natural kind of. I've also got the Matrix one. Somebody did an amazing recreation of, of different versions of the Matrix, including the ability to make a 3D version of it, which I thought was was quite cool. So I like to have those on my site. I also have my picture slideshow, which is kind of what I'm demoing here behind me. And it's just uh, the, all the different travel photos and different photos that are important to me that I, I share on my website. And you can view them as a slideshow. And, and again, it remembers that. So anytime you come back, you can see a new slideshow picture. Uh, the Fanta Waves one is the default one. And then I'm going to demo this one here. This is a recent one. It kind of slows my computer down. So we're, I'm going to fingers crossed on it. And when you click it, it essentially it will generate AI images. So it's AI image generation via stable diffusion but it's running in the browser. So what it does when you first click it here is it downloads the model data to be able to make uh, different AI inference, uh, generative AI art basically. And I've got a different a JSON file, like a text file that has different prompts of like cool ideas for wallpapers. And it takes that and makes a unique wallpaper every time. Uh, now the reason it went so quick there is because it was a bit cached. So now here it's starting the steps that are kind of will slow a computer down typically. It slows my computer down. Uh, and it's not really like lower clocked. So even if you had a faster computer, it probably would still slow it down because it tries to go as fast as possible to make this image. Uh, and on a, a basic computer like mine, I have a not a very good video card. It's better than like mobile or something like that, but it can make an image in, I think it's like 30 seconds. It depends what you're doing on the computer. Uh, and every 10 minutes I had it set to make a new image, but it's basically just a proof of concept. And I say on the thing, this is beta, this is alpha kind of thing because sometimes it doesn't work, often it doesn't work, but when it does, it's kind of cool. So there we go, we got a cool one. So this image is completely new, unique, that got created client side in the browser, which I thought, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, that's that's one of the cooler features, but it, it really slows your computer down. So that's, that's a bit of a, the rough demo.
Uh, and now I'm going to go back to that other wallpaper that I'd, I'd had on here just because I kind of like it. There we go. So, and we'll just do a refresh here because uh, sometimes that stable diffusion can slow the page down after the fact, unfortunately. Like I say, the AI one is a bit beta. Some of the other features you can do here. So if you see here, it's a JPEG image. You can right click it and you can convert it to a different format, say um, PNG. And you right click it and it does that. Uh, and there we go. Now you have a PNG and you can, if you hover over it, you can see that it's 1.13 megabytes, whereas the JPEG was 180 kilobytes. So it didn't do an, a very efficient conversion, but it is now a PNG file. Um, some of the other cool features that I have that I want to demo is that I have the ability not only to drag onto this thing, but I can drag in the other direction for local files. So let's say here you're looking at my pictures and you like this travel photo of me in Bolivia, let's say. I can take this picture and I can actually drag it off of my website and onto the, the real windows, which is kind of a cool thing. I think it only works for one, one file at a time, but it essentially works. So that's like dual drag and drop. So I drag it from my website on my fake file explorer into the real file explorer in the here. And then I could probably take it again and drag it back onto the desktop and then put it there. So that's like a complete drag and drop from one paradigm to another. But because of the work that I've done, it hopefully looks somewhat seamless. Uh, I mean, if you look at the different folders here, they're not exactly the same, basically. Um, but I've tried to, essentially mine is more like how I, I want it to be. Like, I don't actually like this black menu bar. Uh, and recently in the latest version of Windows 10, the, the latest update, they just did an update where they actually changed the way this address bar looks a little bit and they squished it a little bit and they moved the way the hourglass was and a few other things. And I liked parts of it, but I like parts of the old one. So if you see from mine, mine's a little taller and my search works a little different. Uh, I wonder again if dynamic's gonna kill us here. Oh no, it didn't, nice. I wonder if it's only if I search for something dynamic like the U, oh yeah, it is. Oh, that's pretty cool that it, this is another thing that I hadn't demoed before, but uh, I have some isolation within the components. So I was able to crash the file explorer here without crashing the website, which is kind of cool. But there's definitely a bug with dynamic search because when I search with, with the letter U, which this file is a dynamic one, it kind of it gonked out on me there. Uh, but if we were to say for an A there, it's fine. So you see, I prefer this kind of search here where it, it pops them up that way. I've also added folders as the, to the search results before I didn't have the folders. I've done a ton of performance improvements, I, I hope. Uh, even like this example here of opening this folder and the way the icons loaded, that used to be much slower and it used to happen on all files because of, of the nature of what, the way they were. They were shortcuts, so it had to get more information to display them, but they weren't displayed yet. Um, I've tried to do many things that way to make it more performant. Same with lots of other subtle things involving the tags. Maybe this is a good time to open up the dev tools within the browser and switch to the mobile view. So you can see here that it is a complete mobile experience as well. And things I try to resize as much as possible. You see the search here becomes single pane, but you can still search the same way. So let's say we want to search uh, for Paris, let's say. Search Paris and you can see my blog post about Paris. Uh, you can probably see some pictures. You can see a folder here where I talk about it. Um, so as you can see, it's, it's functional as a mobile uh, website as well. And another reason I wanted to open up this was talking about performance. If we look at the elements themselves, like let's say one of the, uh, this picture right here, what I've done is I've used the, the more modern HTML to make these pictures dynamic based on the, uh, the ratio, the pixel ratio of your screen. So I actually have various icons for the different sizes, the 144, the 90, 96 by 96, 48 by 48. And depending on your resolution and your uh, pixel ratio, it'll actually give you different icons and it looks quite a bit more crisp. So that was another thing I've done to try to make it look better on like such as mobile devices, tablets, while also kind of uh, making it more modern. So like uh, it, that's something else I've done that I, I see a lot of sites don't do. I'm not sure if it's like good or bad, but if you see the markup, my HTML code for this, it's all kind of done in a much more semantic way where this is the main the main level here, and this is the list of the icons. This is a navigation element, the taskbar. The, the wallpaper is like a canvas, uh, and the same with each of the buttons as well, as much as I can. I had to make them dibs because of the way Safari works, but I, I've tried to even make the elements make sense and just kind of deconstruct it that way as much as I could. Uh, let's try some more demos here with some of these other files. If you see here, you got soul.exe, what is that? So that's the old, good old days solitaire game that works on like Windows 95. And uh, that's so that we can demo the fact that I have a Windows emulator. So there you go. So you could run something like a, a solitaire if you wanted. 
on this or any kind of exe basically that's a 16 or 32 bit not the 64 bit ones that's one of the caveats uh but yeah you could run it in there and it's even uh it can capture the little icon here at the bottom which is another feature i had even mentioned but uh if you hover over the taskbar I icons you have a dynamic peak here where this is actually happening live basically there's so many more features i could go through here honestly um, as to some of the other demos, like let's say if we were to open up a terminal, if you right click anywhere here, you can open up a terminal and you can type help to see all the various uh, commands here. And there's quite a few. I would say I've tried to recreate pretty much every command that a terminal, the generic terminals will have as far as file system commands to be able to navigate the file system. Like here, we open this up from the desktop so we can do ls. Uh, and you can see here, these are all the, including the dynamic files I've dragged on it. It knows all of those as well. Uh, and some of the other dynamic things here. So let's talking about Windows, talking about old versions of Windows here. You see Win31.image. I actually have an x86 emulator, and you could fully run something like a Windows 3.195, all sorts of 32-bit operating systems or things you could boot off of this emulator, which is called uh, running through virtual x86, they call it. So there you go. So you could even run Windows uh, 3.1, basically, on my website. Uh, and this is uh, this can run other demos as well. Like uh, I also have the DSL 4.4, which is a uh, Debian Linux. Uh, ISO is as well. I can open within File Explorer. So if you see when I double clicked it here, I could see the contents of the ISO. But if I right click it, I can also say open it in the emulator, and it will open in in the emulator. So now we can run emulated Linux while we also have emulated 3.1 here, and we have my real terminal here as well. And you can hover over all these to see the little previews as they're doing things. So you can see this one here, how dynamic it is that even when it's changing, if it changes here, there we go. So now it's doing a little bit of text here at the bottom and you can see that that's actually happening. Uh, it's not fake basically, is, what is it the demo there? So yeah, it can run these and it can boot Linux. And just while it's doing that in the background, we could do some other demos. I've got a PDF reader in here and I've recently made the PDFs dynamic. So you see here the scroll bar increasing in size. Before, this 300-page PDF just basically wouldn't open. It would take forever to load them all. But now I've been able to make it more dynamic, and uh, and then it could load. Basically, then it worked. Um, what are some other things? QOI, this is quite okay image format. That's another format that's not native supported that I've added support for. RTFs, it tries to convert RTFs, which is like a rich text format, into this other format. Clearly, it didn't do a very good job here. Um, this is actually, yeah, it didn't do a very good job here because it didn't uh, understand the coloring in dark mode. That's probably something to tweak, but it did try to attempt to convert the RTF into an HTML file. It didn't do great. Um, a good example of that, let's say we open up one of my blog posts here. This is one of my blog posts, and I've changed my blog post format a little bit in that I've made it look more simple, the the, dem the the way that it previews here, but it still is tiny MCE, which is a WYSIWYG editor. So if you see here at the bottom left, edit document, you can actually edit and make blog posts in here. So you could even edit my blog post and like delete piece of it and press save and then that'll save it. So if you were to come back, you would see that that piece has been deleted and it even updates the icon to show a new version of it. So like, let's say if I were to delete all the text here from the start and save that and then refresh, you'll see the icon. Oh, it actually didn't change it there. Oh, that's because I've explicitly set that shortcut icon. If we open the folder for it, here we go. Here you can see that the real icon is now, those images are like touching. Uh, which is, the, if you shrink this enough, I think you'd probably get that effect. Yeah, that's kind of what that image, that shortcut looks like, is a bit like that. So that's a, that's dynamic. Uh, but if we reset that here and we open up the blog post again, you see it never really changed, and it only changes locally. Some other cool things I've added to within the blog is if you click some browser links, such as a Wikipedia link, it can open it in our, my fake internal browser because Wikipedia allows iframe cores connections so this looks now like we're running like a fake version of chrome in my site and the this is really wikipedia but it's just kind of still a lot of smoke and mirrors to make it happen and quite a f and, and very few of these demos within the, the fake browser work but some of them do so that's why i've kept it because it's pretty cool uh these pictures as well if you click them this my family will open uh in the photo viewer there's my my dogs uh, I have another beagle, but last year my beagle was here, but now that I have another puppy there, they freak out too much to be in this video, unfortunately. Maybe next year they'll be in the video. Uh, what else do I have here? I have my, my YouTube player as well. Like the video player can also play YouTube links. And I've done a lot of work to fix the resizing and allow the dynamic title and, and stuff as well, even though it's running directly in YouTube. So I've tried again to kind of integrate things as much as possible. 
that's a huge theme throughout my site is to try to make it so seamless that you you're always just like well well what how did he do that or or they're not even sure like uh, yeah like that's the biggest thing is just making people not sure even the right click menu to try to make it feel natural where people forget that this isn't the browser right click menu this isn't windows this is just my website showing you a box, a gray box that you think is the menu, basically, and that I've done a lot of work to try to make look like the menu. Even things like you see how that animates open, and you see here when I'm hovered on a sub menu, but if I go away, it doesn't fade instantly. That was something I had to learn, things like that, because if you fade it instantly, it becomes, from a, U, a UX point of view, a user experience, it's a lot harder to click things, honestly. What are some other things I have on here? Map directory to be able to map a actual directory like that test files folder so let's say test files here i can actually map an external from the os folder into my website so here i go select folder the browser says are you sure you want to allow that okay sure it's just client side and so now this folder here is essentially the exact same folder as here but running on my website through the um file system access APIs that the browser allows for me to be able to know what's on someone's computer as well. And you can see here that my icons and theirs match, but uh, like say the quite okay image, I have the thumbnail, Windows doesn't, I have an animated GIF, it doesn't, I have an animated video, it doesn't. So I've tried whenever I can to even improve upon it. Um, and now we could even run the files from here. So I could even clear this and not have not have dragged the files on, but just map the test folder and then I still have it all in my system here, just like that. And this persists. So if I refresh, the folder's still here. And if I click it again, it asks me again. And there we go. And I can see them again. And I can interact with them all the same way. And they can, so through the mounted folder, I could even run that OS. I can run Linux from the mounted folder without ever actually putting the files on my website, kind of. I mean, if you read it once, essentially it's there. You've put it there by giving that information out. Uh, but that's something that, like you say, there was that prompt there, or like you saw. So the prompt is you accepting that connection. And it's just purely client side, like I say again. Um, so then that's loaded. What other cool examples? I have a font viewer uh, using a, a font JavaScript library. So this can read font files. And I tried to make it look like the font viewer that's in Windows, because there is a font viewer in Windows here. Oh, it's pretty big. Um, but yeah, I've tried to make it look similar. Obviously, I don't have the install button, although I could. I've, I've been considering that, the ability to set to drag a font on and then set that as your system font. And on that note, here's another thing. If you see the cursor file here, I actually have the ability to set the cursor. So set as mouse pointer. Oh, but it didn't work. Interesting. Huh. Well, maybe that's a bad example. One second, because I think I had another file that... That's unfortunate. I didn't try this one out beforehand, but I used to have... I definitely have the ability to set those icons here let's try this one here with this annie file if i try set that as the mouse pointer okay that one does so there's another bug again the demo bugs but i expected the cursor file to work the animated cursor file works although that doesn't animate um but as you can see now my cursor is that annie file and ideally i could have made it this cursor file in the future i will that's another bug that i've logged for for quick fix so that's another kind of neat feature and this also persists so if you refresh and you come back, it remembers that you wanted a custom cursor on this website and you want to see this stuff still. Uh, and this actually is a two-way connection too. So this file here that is not in the test files, which is in my OS, I can take it and drag it on here. And it said, now again, the browser says, do you want to allow them to write? And now, and now where we're looking at this question here, we can see that I also have a transfer dialog that I've made. That's again, fake. Save changes. It wrote it and boom, there it is. Now it got put there. And it sorted it there. If I refresh, does my thing sort that way? No. Because I already remember the sorting order from initially and knew that it was put here. But if I were to map it again, it probably would also sort correctly at the same place. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, now it's positioned exactly where it is on the Windows one. Yeah, there we go. So cool. Uh, so, so again, it's it's even more backwards. So you can drag in and out. You can open a folder and drag in that folder to get it out. Um, as much interaction as I could, could imagine. And then within that, there's more features. So let's say here, if we want to take these four files, uh, we can copy them to copy them and paste them here. We can use in the right click menu. So copy and paste works. Uh, you can also cut, let's try to cut that out. We'll cut this thing that we took. Uh, and as you see here, it kind of transparents and then we can paste it in here. And there you go. It's gone from there. And we can take all of these together and we can add them to a zip folder if we want. Add to archive. And then now you got a zip. And if you open up the zip, it's got those five files. 
we could put them back on here. And then from within re the real windows, we could open it and see that indeed it has zipped up those five files. I also have the ability to unzip things. Uh, let's say here's a RAR file is a good example. Um, let's copy that one as well. Paste it here. So if we right click the RAR file and extract here, it can also extract pretty much any kind of format, really. RAR, zip, 7-zip. It's actually got something called 7-zip integrated, which is a very good tool for being able to extract almost anything, really, even from executables and stuff. So let's say the solitaire, uh, or it's also here. I can right-click solitaire and even say extract, and it'll literally find files within the executable. Uh, and you can see like the actual sort resource files, the icon, um, not much in there of interest, I guess, whatever this stuff is. I think these are images. Oh yeah, cool. It's actually got like the cards. Nice. So that's, that's like extracted from the executable of solitaire. Oh, wow. That's big. Let's set it as the centered instead. So there should be an ace of hearts. I can right click here and say, show the desktop. And there's the ace of hearts that I extracted from the solitaire executable on my website. Uh, let's reset everything here and see what else we can do. We can also just add a single file. So within the test files, you could just pick one thing to drag in there. Is there anything else to demo? Yeah, this XLS file. So we add just one file. This is an XLS spreadsheet document. And I also have the ability to convert spreadsheet documents. So we could convert this to CSV. If you were to open it here, I've also added an open with dialog. So if you do choose another app, now you can pick from many different apps instead of just the suggested ones before. Uh, so let's pick Monaco Editor, and we can see that's what the XLS document looks like. But if you were to convert it into a CSV, and then if you were to open up the CSV in Monaco Editor, you see now it kind of cleaned it up because now it's it's in CSV format. I don't have a spreadsheet viewer, but it, I can. that is the demo to, to show that it does do that. Uh, what other things? I mean, we could just start going through the start menu here. We went through Boxed Wine. You can also just open Boxed Wine without an executable. That's the thing that runs the 16 32-bit Windows apps. Uh, you can kind of just run it through here to even just see it has a few little pieces of app itself. Uh, I don't think it has very much. Maybe it has Notepad, I think, at least. It probably has Notepad. Notepad. Yeah, so you could play around with Notepad. And this can run other things. It can run Notepad++ as well. Uh, the emulator JS. So I've got some demo ROM files here. If you go into games under ROMs, I have various ones. But it can run tons of other ones. This is Nintendo, Game Boy, Super... This might be Sega, Atari, Sega Genesis, Nintendo DS. These happen to be free games that people have made, but you could run any emulator and any ROMs basically on on this uh, from from a tons of consoles. Basically, this happens to be the Super Nintendo one, but there's so many other consoles it can run. Uh, and I have another game on here that's running in boxed wine, the Ski Free. This is a free game that he released a long time ago. The person who made this. So this is another classic uh, game that you can play on there. Ruffle is for playing Flash files, uh, which have games and videos. I happen to have a few to demo, like Strong Bad. If for people that know Strong Bad back in the day, this is something that I kind of grew up with playing with that. Uh, but it can also do like live interactive demos. There's this fake version of Windows, uh, which within my fake version of Windows already, called Windows RG, and this is like an interactive, silly fake Windows in its own right kind of thing. Uh, or this one, Badger, Badger, Badger. If people remember that from back in the day. Um, I've already shown the x86 emulator. You can just open it too and just see it like fail to boot in anything, which is something. And I actually have some other demos too within that, like documents, disk images. I have four different ones. Calibri is like almost like a type of a custom OS. I have another different version of Linux. This Linux one is cool because it's actually already been pre-set up to link with the file system. So if you see here, if you go ls uh, and then mount, you can actually see that those files are the same ones that are in here. So there's actually an interconnect between the emulator as well. Uh, same with the internet as well. This actually can connect via a WebSockets proxy that is just kind of out there in the world. And you can actually make connections and do ping and stuff. Although I haven't tested this in a while, so it's possible it doesn't work. It looks like it might be. Let's try to ping something. Ping google.ca, ooh, not CAS, CA. Oh, interesting. I wonder, maybe it can just, maybe no DNS, but it can ping uh, direct IP addresses. Yeah, there we go. So the fact that it's pinging means there is some kind of internet connection there, which is kind of cool. Um, what are some other demos I have for games? I have some ports that I've added over. Classy Cube is kind of like a Minecraft port a little bit, and it's a fun one you can play. I, I'm not, I kind of missed the Minecraft phase. I was a little too old for that, but it's in there. 
DX Ball. I was old enough for this one. This is a fun game that I used to play back in the day. Oh, it's a little loud, surprisingly. But it's pretty fun, and it keeps track of the scores as well, which is kind of cool. I've also got some of these here within the search. Uh, the search also has a memory, too, so it keeps track of things you've clicked. Another one, uh, Space Cadet. That's the one everybody knows, classic pinball. This is a fully functional demo as well. And it's got some music I didn't remember, actually. I probably don't... Uh... Let's cut the music here. Oh, that's funny. So I don't know. How easy... it, it, turning the music off does, isn't as easy as I thought it was. Uh, maybe that's a bug, I guess. I don't mind that one. Another cool game that I have, uh, very cool in my opinion, is Quake 3. The ability... Oh, it's because I ran Space Cadet sometimes. That's one bug that I... A known bug is trying to run Quake after running something like another port, like Space Cadet. Kind of doesn't work. But all you have to do is refresh the page. And then this is full-on Quake 3 and works. So this is another one that I, I'm really proud that I've been able to get onto the website. I didn't obviously make uh, the pieces to get this far, but I was able to do the integration, which I thought was kind of cool. And this can, uh, you can play in full screen. Oh, it's kind of hard. Tough game. But I used to play that as a kid, so that's always cool that I was able to get that in there. I mentioned the fake browser. This dev tools is pretty cool. You can also right click and press inspect and essentially it opens up a, uh, it's not even fake. It's like a real dev tools that'll really log consoles from the app. It'll, you can really inspect the elements. So you can look here and actually see the body of the page as it's going. So like, let's say here, that's one of the icons and you can see the information about it, the button, you can see the text for it, it's picture and really dig into it. Uh, so that's kind of a bit meta. Same with the network here. So if I was to open something, something that makes the network, here we go, that made the network read the thumbnail and you can see the network requests as they come. Uh, or if you're opening up the videos, you can see that it made a get request to the video and that it even got the response from Cloudflare, the CDN. So that's kind of cool. You can see all the different resources on the website. It kind of knows about them all. I thought it was kind of neat. Another piece to that besides inspect is view page source, which just opens Monaco, but it downloads the index file. Basically the same thing as, as doing a view page source on a normal web page. And that's like essentially what my index file looks like. And there's nothing fancy in there. I have IRC on here. I don't use it too often, but uh, it does it via WebSockets. You can connect the IRC servers via WebSockets and the Libra chat is open, which is actually a huge IRC server here. There's like 33,000 people online, it looks like here, something like that. Yeah, 30, yeah, something like that. There's 30,000 at least. So that's a full on IRC server and you could just like chat on there. Speaking of chat, I have uh, added a messenger this year. So if you see my name here, Dustin Brett, you can click that and it'll actually open my own messenger app that I've built. Um, now, because I have a plugin that connects me to Noster, it's called N-O-S-T-R. It's the protocol for, for connecting where there's no backend and it's all like distributed basically. Um, so if you go here to the main page, you can see here all the connections, uh, these green dots here. Now I get tons of messages, which is pretty cool. I'm happy about that, but it's more than I can catch. So you see here, there's a few people. Hi, hi, please reply, sir. I do reply to those people, but at any given day, there's going to be like 20 of those it's been, uh, which is cool. And I have, I try to reply to all of them. So this is the messenger client that I've built based on the Noster protocol. Uh, and I'm pretty proud of it. It works pretty good and it connects to a bunch of servers. If you highlight them here, you can see which servers they are. This one's w, uh, NOS LOL. Uh, and the WSS is like saying a, a secure WebSocket connection. So these are, it's pretty secure. It's going to be more secure pretty soon because they're working on new encryption for the direct messaging protocol. And when that comes out, I'm going to update my Noster client to work that way. But until then, I have a way to communicate with me if you want to send me a message that way. You could just, uh, if you were to use this, you don't have that Noster browser extension that automatically logs you in. What it will do is it will create a user for you. And then you can choose to change that user or log in with a different user by using the, your own browser extension tool. Uh, so there's plenty of ways to contact me anyways via that tool. Uh, close it for now and just keep looking here. What else we got? I have marked viewer. If you go to the main folder here, I actually have a file called credits.markdown. And this is a markdown viewer. And you can see here some, if not most of the libraries and tools that I've also used to integrate into my site are, are mentioned in that document there. The Monaco editor, you've seen it a few times. It works for different tools. It's got like a little pretty print built in. So if you click here, it can clean up a lot of files like JSON, XML, that kind of thing, just to make it more readable. And then also you can kind of navigate them this way, which makes it easier. This is essentially the history file of the OS. Uh, and you can just clear that out to kind of reset it. 
what else we got? So many things. Uh, JS paint for people that like to paint. And you could turn that into your wallpaper if you want. You could say set as the wallpaper. And that becomes the wallpaper. Um, I've mentioned the PDF viewer, the photo viewer, stable diffusion, the app. It's the same as the wallpaper, but you can pick your prompts. Uh, the prompts are in the picture folder as well. I've got a lot of folders of various things. I have pictures, my own pictures in here. Here's the prompt one with all the different prompts. Um, you can see my pictures in there. I had different videos. Some of these are actual video files. Some of them are just shortcuts to YouTube. Uh, I mentioned the music ones and documents. Do I have anything else of interest? The Winamp scans. These WASM files are cool. So I have the ability to run WebAssembly files as well. Like I'm using WebAssembly already tons throughout the site, but I can also run WebAssembly files. So something like cowsay.wasm, I can just double click that and it'll actually run cowsay. So I can change it here and now I can add to it and say hello. And it'll, you can see that that's a dynamic WebAssembly program running that's been compiled from C source or however it came, wherever it came to be. Uh, so that's one cool example. Next up here is Vim. For people that like to edit Vim files, you can edit them in Vim. And uh, if we reset everything here and we just open up, let's say the doc, one of my this document here, this blog, I can right click it and edit it in Vim. And essentially, you could make a blog post in Vim if you wanted. I I don't know much about how to use Vim, so um, it's not for me. But it's something I was able to add to the site. And I think I've gone through maybe. 62% of the features, but I'd like to stop it there because I think that gives everybody a great idea of what it is. Thank you for checking out this video. Thank you for supporting me for three years. My website's dustinbrett.com if you want to check it out. The project is Datal OS on GitHub. Uh, please feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel to support me. Thanks very much for everything, and uh, I'll hope uh, I hope to be able to make another video next year, and I hope to make another one even sooner than that, and see you in the next one. So thank you very much. Goodbye.